Hi there, I'm Alicia Malone and you're here just in time to see Rita Hayworth and Orson Welles in The Lady from Shanghai, directed by Welles in 1947. When they made this film noir, Hayworth and Welles were married and had a child together, though their relationship was struggling. Hayworth was actually not Welles' first choice to play the intriguing Elsa Bannister, who leads his Michael O'Hara into a dark and complex web of deceit and murder. Instead, it was the head of Columbia Pictures, Harry Cohn, who was putting up the money for the film, who insisted that Wells cast his own wife. Rita Hayworth had arrived at Columbia in the late 1930s as Margarita Cancino. Cohn ordered a dramatic and quite brutal transformation of his new star, turning her into a hugely popular sex symbol and pin-up girl who sparkled on screen, especially in Gilda from 1946. Hayworth and Wells divorced in 1947, and she kept acting, making her final film in 1972. But she'd been struggling to remember her lines for a few years, and finally in 1980, she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. This was a little-known condition at the time, and the publicity that surrounded her diagnosis brought more awareness to Alzheimer's, as well as much-needed funding for research. And this Wednesday, October 23rd, the Imagine Benefit, built on the legacy of the Rita Hayworth Gala, will host an event in New York City in support of the Alzheimer's Association. Hayworth's daughter with Prince Ali Khan, Princess Yasmin Aga Khan, started the Rita Hayworth Galas in memory of her mother, who passed away from Alzheimer's in 1987. The New York City Gala and its sister event in Chicago have raised over $87 million to support the Alzheimer's Association. Bravo. Please visit the website alz.org for more information. But right now, let's watch Rita Hayworth in The Lady from Shanghai. Orson Welles was disappointed by the reaction to The Lady from Shanghai and later told filmmaker Peter Bogdanovich that even his friends avoided talking to him about the movie. Whenever it was mentioned, Welles said people would clear their throats and change the subject very quickly out of consideration for my feelings. The production was very troubled and suffered from various delays and when he first edited the film, Welles's cut was around two and a half hours long. That tested poorly with audiences, so Columbia Pictures insisted on trimming it down to just 87 minutes. But we can still appreciate the mastery of the direction and cinematography, and Wells was happy to discover that it had been considered a good film in Europe. All right, keep it here on TCM, because after the break, we'll watch a supernatural comedy directed by David Lean and starring Rex Harrison as a man who is haunted by the ghost of his wife. Back soon. Next on TCM, Blythe Spirit, then the 7% Solution, and later, The Human Factor. TCM is for all mankind, tonight. 